Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar on estate planning for the LGBTQIA community. Um, we're really happy to have you with us here today and delighted to introduce you to our experts. My name is Jen Fries. I am the Community Engagement Manager for the Harvard Federal Credit Union, and I will be uh, your host today. So this is webinar format, and that means we cannot see you, we cannot hear you, so enjoy your lunch or uh, whatever you need to do in the background. Uh, you will still be able to participate in the webinar fully. Um, we're going to ask you to put your questions into the Q&A feature. So that is the uh, way that you can ask our experts questions uh, on the fly or anything that you think of as you're watching the presentation. Go ahead and drop questions in at any time uh, during the webinar, and then we will likely get to them toward the end. Um, so feel free to do that. This presentation is being recorded and it will also be posted on our YouTube page. So you'll be able to review it all later. Uh, everyone who registered will also get a copy of the slides as well. So just for a moment before we start in on our topic, I want to um, make sure that everybody knows that we were formerly known as Harvard University Employees Credit Union, and we are now the Harvard Federal Credit Union, still the same great credit union that you're used to and everything that you're used to as a member uh, continues to um, be part of our vision of who we are. We are community focused. We're, we're a not-for-profit financial institution, so we're owned by our members. And uh, that means that instead of having to skim off profit for shareholders or anything like that, we are able to reinvest our profit or anything back into the community, back into you, the members in the, in the form of better rates and services, um, including the services we're, we're gonna talk about today, Gentrio being something that um, we think is really important and something that our membership had asked for for a long time. You can do digital banking with us. You can do shared banking, shared branching um, with credit unions around the country, meaning you can walk in and have that same in-person credit union experience in credit unions that we work with all around the country. And um, we are um, we have a wide range of services. So do check our website if you don't already know about that. Um, but we're not just... Um, checking accounts were also uh, student loans and mortgage lending and that kind of thing. So today um, we are delighted to have some um, great experts here to talk to you. We are gonna hear from Julie Fry. She's the CEO and co-founder of Gentrio. She is an expert in elder care and estate planning. Uh, one of the things that Julie does is she organizes uh, our aging market conference at the Harvard Business School Association of Boston. That's a conference that unites leading companies targeting the senior market. She was previously on the executive team at the National Association for Home Care and Hospice, and she helped co-found the National Private Duty Home Care Association. So she has a lot of experience in those aspects of um, end-of-life care or, or uh, elder care. And we are also going to hear from um, Jacob Murphy, who uh, is the Director of Business Development at Gentrio. He also hosts their weekly podcast on estate planning, so do check that out um, if you're able to do that. And we're going to hear from John Bolera. He's the Director of Business Services at Gentrio, and he's really focused on the user experience. So I am going to have um, Julie take it away now. Thanks, Jen. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And today, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through and talk a little bit about estate planning, introduce you to what estate planning is, and specifically how it is so incredibly important to the LBGTQIA plus community. 
I'm going to actually pass it over to Jake and he's going to talk a little bit more about estate planning. I'll do some of the documents, talk to you specifically about uh, what you should keep an eye out for. And then John will introduce Jen Trio. Um, as Jen had mentioned, if you have questions throughout, please put it in the Q&A. And then also, if there is something that you want to ask offline, our email address, you could just do info at gentrio.com. And one of us will reach out um, back to you so we can answer your questions privately. With that, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Jake. How's everyone doing today? So uh, as Julie mentioned, my name is Jake Murphy. Um, I'm an estate plan uh, expert in the industry, and I've been with Gentrio just for about five years now. So today uh, we're going to be talking about, as we've mentioned, estate planning in the LGBTQIA plus community and why it really is so important. Um, as Julie mentioned, again, we're going to go through what estate planning is, what it does to protect your assets and your choices, um, and then we'll break it down by each document and what they do specifically. Um, and then John will talk a little more about the Gentrio solution. So to get started, uh, we always like to um, talk about this point first, that estate planning truly is for everyone. It's relevant to everyone. Everyone over the age of 18 needs to have an estate plan to make sure that they're in control of their choices, um, who takes care of their assets, uh, and who is trusted to uphold their wishes. And within the LGBTQ community, estate planning really is so important because primarily the uh, the amount of domestic partnerships or situations where couples choose not to formally marry are much more prevalent. And if you're not in a recognized marriage or domestic partnership, you need to make sure you have an estate plan in place. Specifically a will that, um, that names who the guardian is of your minor children. Um, so if you and your partner have a child, it's crucial to make sure that you have, um, you know, named who that child's guardian would be in your will. And uh, with a will and other estate planning documents in place, your wishes are upheld and you avoid lost time, money, uh, and getting the courts involved. And additionally, your estate plan should be a living set of documents that you update regularly and it grows with you as your life and circumstances change. So in the LGBT community, so few people have a will, only 37% do as you see here. Um, and that's something that we at Gentry are really trying to change. Uh, we want to make sure that you have the opportunity to make your own decisions, your own choices. Um, things like who can speak to your doctors, who takes care of your children, like I said, should you be unable to. Uh, who can make financial decisions on your behalf, should you be uh, unavailable. <clears throat> and we want to make sure that you can create your own estate plan that represents you and who you are and use it properly to uphold all of your choices as your life changes and as those changes in your life occur, you have the tools with Gentrio to plan accordingly. So again, as I've mentioned, estate planning not only protects your children, but also your healthcare decisions. Um, who controls your assets uh, when you can't be there? And again, it's prevalent in every stage of your life, whether you're just getting started um, you know, from your children, leaving your house, providing care to your elderly parents, estate planning is really important um, in all of these different scenarios. Every important milestone that will occur in your life, estate planning needs to be updated and tailored specifically to where you are in life right now to make sure that should the worst happen, you're prepared. And as we've all seen, especially in these last few years, life can change very suddenly and very drastically. So it's not only important to have proper documentations in place, um, but it's crucial to have them up to date to reflect your current choices. So completing your estate plan is important because it really is effective. Um, and once you've gone and protected your choices with the right documents, it gives you that sound peace of mind to make sure that should the worst happen, you are protected. Having the authority in place, it saves countless hours, uh, countless dollars, and arguably most important, it saves from that emotional strife of having to deal with the mess uh, that would have been left behind should these documents not be in place. When a crisis happens, you already have enough to deal with and the mess of not having an estate plan in place, um, it only adds to that ordeal. So being protected, having your wishes already stated, it saves you from having to fight the court, spend time and money, like I said, when you're already in the middle of dealing with a crisis.
the consequences of not having an estate plan, they really do add up quickly. Um, without an estate plan, you lose control of the choices that you would have made. Um, you can lose three to 8% of your assets fighting the courts and from legal fees, et cetera. Um, there's the family strife that I talked about, and it can take years to settle. We want to make sure that you have a plan in place that prevents these kind of scenarios as much as possible by giving you the tools to protect yourself and your choices, your loved ones, and your assets. So I really cannot emphasize enough the risk that comes with not having a plan. Um, the most important factor is that your choices are no longer in your own hands. And when life happens, you don't want to leave those decisions to someone who doesn't have a deep understanding of your life and your specific situations. If you pass away without a will, you enter into what's called interstate, where the state has to get involved to settle your estate. Um, this is important, again, for the LGBT community, because if you're in a partnership that, again, is not legally recognized, the state does not take into consideration who your partner is. So you could have been living with your partner for 20, 30 years, um, but because you don't have that will in place naming them, the state can simply step in and ignore that entire relationship and grant your children to someone else, your assets to someone else, your home to someone else based on those state laws and not your situation, your wishes. So again, within uh, an estate plan as a whole, it gives you that power to say what your choices are and it ensures that your wishes are upheld. And with that, we're going to dive in a little more into each document. I'm going to pass it back to Julie, and she's going to talk about what each document is and what they do more in a little more detail. As you could tell, I was really excited to talk about the documents. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks, Jake. Um, what I want to go through now is a little bit of the specifics of what estate planning is, because estate planning is more than just creating your will. It's really making sure that you have documents so that you control your choices and your decisions. And as Jake said, these are an estate plan needs to be updated as your life is up as your life changes. So with each document, we'll go through what the document is, when you can use it, what it mainly covers, and why it's specific to the LGBTQ community. The one that most people know about is, and they first think of when they think of estate planning is the last will and testament. And your will is something that everyone over the age of 18 should have because, as Jake mentioned, it allows you to take control of your choices as well as it allows you to make sure that you can control who has access to what after you pass away. Uh, with a will, the will only is effective after you pass away. So any decisions before you pass away are not are covered under other documents. The will happens after you pass away. And it says, number one, who control or who can be the uh, who takes care of your children or your the minors when you can't do so. So you can make sure that you name who you want to care for your child. And this is extremely important because if you are not in a recognized domestic partnership, or if you're not in a recognized um, marriage, then the courts will decide and the laws of intestacy of your state will decide who cares for your children. Your will allows you to say who can be the guardian and any backup guardian, super important. In addition, it allows you to say who takes control of your assets. And assets are everything like your home. If you have a home that you share with someone, it has a, uh, like your cars, your money, your retirement, et cetera. And this is very important because you wanna make sure that you address as much as you can in the will prior to passing away so that your family doesn't have to fight through this and the courts don't have to fight through this, and you don't make your family incur large legal fees. That's where you really lose that three to 8% of your assets. Um, the documents are extremely easy to create with Gentrio. Basically, it's like a state uh, TurboTax for estate planning. When you go through, you fill out a survey 
based on what your choices are. So you can name your beneficiaries. You can leave money to charities. You can leave individual gifts. You can make sure that you name who the guardians of your children are, um, who you want to leave your pets to, et cetera. And then after you fill out the survey, it creates a PDF, which is legal across all 50 states. So first and foremost, everybody needs a will. The second of the big three documents is your healthcare proxy. And this healthcare proxy is extremely important. And again, this is a document that everyone should have. A Gentrio healthcare proxy actually has multiple aspects. It not only allows you to set up what your own decisions are, um, many people know of it uh, or, or call it a living will, like do you want life-sustaining treatments, artificial hydration, et cetera, but it also allows you to say who can talk to your doctors or your medical team. And if it also allows you to name who can make medical decisions on your behalf if you're unable to do so. This is extremely important because in an emergency, you want to make sure that your family, A, knows who they can turn to to make decisions on your behalf. B, they have access to those documents so that they can actually make those decisions for you. And then C, this is a really important document because it has a HIPAA release so that whoever you want can have access to your medical team and can discuss your situation with your medical team. This is really important, especially if you have children who are going off to college. So, so many times people, kids go off to college or young adults turn 18 and the parents are so used to being involved in their medical care and the kids are used to having their parents involved in their medical care. But once they turn 18 or legal and legal adults, it is imperative that they have a HIPAA release and then also that healthcare proxy to make sure that you can help care for your adult children and your adult children have the ability to name you as somebody who can talk to their medical team. So very important for young, also extremely and very important for the elderly. When you care for an elderly parent, you want to make sure that you have a, a healthcare proxy in place because that healthcare proxy is going to allow you to talk to their doctors, get their prescriptions, make decisions for them. And so if you are caring for an elderly parent, the healthcare proxy is imperative to have. The healthcare proxy is only valid and useful when you're still living. So the healthcare proxy takes effect when uh, it, it automatically takes effect, especially for the HIPAA, as soon as it is executed or made legal. But then in addition, it stays in effect until you pass away. So in the event, for example, our father had Alzheimer's disease. Once he no longer had the mental capacity to make decisions, we could use the healthcare proxy to make those decisions on his behalf. So very important so that you can make those decisions now while you're still mentally capable of making legal decisions so that when the time comes, everybody knows what your choices are. For us, this was super important because when dad did have Alzheimer's, the last six months of his life, he really couldn't speak. Um, and when he went into the hospital, the doctor turned to my mother and asked, do you want life-sustaining treatments? And it was great because we were able to step in and say, no, that decision has already been made. And so it changed the narrative. And it was very important because instead of my mom having to feel like she pulled the plug on my father, it was us being able to reassure her that this was what our father wanted. So this is a decision that's not easy to make, but it's imperative that you make it because you want to make sure that you control who has access to make those decisions for you and they can uphold what you want. So 
The healthcare proxy is a fairly standard document that's across all 50 states. Some states will call it a power of attorney for healthcare. And this is something that you want to make sure that you have so that when you do go in for medical treatment, um, like if you're going to have a surgery, et cetera, that you have this document in place. Um, we recommend that you do two things with the healthcare proxy. Number one, you want to make sure that you upload it into your digital vault and that you share it with whomever you choose so that they have that legal document to step in and help fulfill your wishes. And then number two, you also want to make sure that you provide a copy to your doctors. If you have your general doctor or your oncologist, whoever your main doctor is, so that they have a copy of it already on file, there are no questions, and you're able to get those um, people and those connections made before you even need those. The next of the last of the three big documents is your power of attorney for finances. This is an incredibly important document and it's an incredibly powerful document. Your power of attorney for finances allows you to say who has access to your assets while you're still living. And this is important because number one, this is another document that only takes effect while you're still living. And then number two, it allows you to say who can step in and help take control of your finances. And this is really important because you wanna make sure that you have your PO, your power of attorney for finance, your attorney, who is somebody you trust will make decisions on your best to the best of their ability and on the, the your behalf and then you want to make sure that if you do have a situation like for our family alzheimer's or if you're somebody is going away for an extended vacation if you need to step in and take control over someone's finances like paying taxes or um, making this uh, paying their mortgage or insurances, et cetera. That POA gives them the power to step in and make those financial decisions and pay for things out of their own assets when you can't do when they can't do it themselves. And the POA for finances is there are two different ways that you can actually use a POA and you can take control over who has access to what and when. So you can have either a limited power of attorney for finances, which means that you can limit it both by time. Like my son's going in the military or on vacation and he's gone for three months and, and you can set it a specific time or you can have it durable. Like I want to give my children or my partner uh, the ability to make financial decisions for me and, uh, and for the long term. So number one, it's by time. And then number two, our power of attorney for finances also allows you to control who has access to what based on what authorities you give them. So if you want to give someone access to your checking account, you can do that. But you, Or you want to give them access to be able to pay your mortgage or your insurance or bills, et cetera, you can do that. But if you don't want them to make major decisions like um, changing asset beneficiaries or getting in and being able to um, change your will, et cetera, you can control what authorities that you give them. So the POA for finances, while it's a very important document, it's a document that you can control so that you can make sure that you know who is making decisions on your behalf, when they're making those decisions and what authorities that you grant them. Another very popular document is your living trust and a pour over will. And a living trust is a legal document that creates a legal entity that can hold assets. This is important because a living trust allows you to set up a 
entity that can hold assets like your home or your bank accounts or your insurances, et cetera. And what this does, a living trust allows you to do two main things. Number one, it allows you to avoid probate and it gives you the control over who has access to what. This is really important, especially to the LBGQ community, because if you are in a situation where you're living with someone and you wanna make sure that you leave your home to that person, you can actually change the deed and put the deed into the name of the trust so that if you do pass away, you can make sure that you can give the home directly to your partner. It's also very important because by avoiding probate, if you have assets that people need to access right away, any of the assets that are involved and inside of that trust, people can get access to immediately. So you don't have to go through the whole probate process. Um, I know Jake had mentioned it before, but uh, basically what probate is, it's the legal process of basically putting your final affairs in order. And so there, with probate, you can either turn over your will that's been legally executed and the probate court goes through, make sure that it's a legal will. And um, if there are no, if it's not contested, it goes through very quickly. That's why it's so important to have a will to really avoid that probate process. Or if you don't have a will, then the probate court has to step in and make all decisions on your behalf. And those are based off of the laws of each state. So avoiding probate, huge, huge opportunity by using that living trust. In addition, people use that living trust to make sure that they can have privacy. Because when you go through the probate process, your will becomes public knowledge. So anybody, once a will is probated, can go in and get access to your will and uh, through the probate court. Having a living trust in a pour over will allows you to state the basics of your will and then any of the assets that you have get poured over into the living trust. And the living trust will handle the disbursements and will handle who actually um, gets what, your beneficiaries, et cetera. Um, and so people use the living trust and pour over will to avoid probate and to maintain their privacy. For the LGBT community, it's very important because the living trust gives you the opportunity to name assets and other people's names, and that all happens while you're still living. The pour over will basically is very similar to the regular will, but it pours over any assets that are unaccounted for into that living trust. And that pour over will does not go into effect until after you pass away. Another popular document that we have is a pet trust. While we think of pets as family and we wanna be able to leave them money, et cetera, the courts do not. This is very important because in a will or a pour over will, you want to make sure that you leave your pets to um, someone so that they can be the guardian of your pet after you pass away. And so they're treated as an asset. But as we all know, pets can be really expensive. And so many people want to put together a pet trust. And what the pet trust does it, is allows you, it allows you to set up a trust or legal entity that allows you to give money towards the care or the specifically towards the care of your pet. It makes sure that you say who will care for your pet. It, it allows you to say like what your healthcare decisions are, what the life of the pet looks like, um, like who your vet is, et cetera, what you want to have happen. So for example, if your your dog is, like 18 years old and is pain and, and you want to allow them to make medical decisions for them, you can do that. Um, but it also allows you to 
leave specific money or assets to a human so that human can care for your pet. Along the pet lines, the other thing that we offer is a new document that's fairly new in the industry called a pet power of attorney. And a pet power of attorney is for the care of your pet while you're still living. And the pet power of attorney does a couple of things. Number one, it allows you to name someone like a pet sitter, your next door neighbor, et cetera, to say who can make decisions for your pet, when they can make decisions. And then if you have specific decisions, like you don't want them to euthanize them or you don't want them to be able to give them to a shelter, et cetera, you can name what type of care that you want your pet to have. This is important mainly when you go on vacation or when you leave your pet in someone else's care. So when we went on vacation, we went for a couple of weeks, we left our dog with a pet sitter. We gave our pet sitter a pet power of attorney so that if she did need to make any decisions, all those decisions were already made for the dog, our dog, that's actually a picture of our dog, Butter. Um, and then when we came home, the pet uh, power of attorney was invalidated. And so we took over control. It also allowed us to say how much money that the pet sitter could actually spend towards the care of your pet. Um, a, we actually had a friend who was in the military and he left. And unfortunately, the pet had a major medical issue, his stomach flipped. And the dog needed major surgery. When the dog needed that surgery, the vet wouldn't make, uh, the vet uh, dealt with the dog's pain, but wouldn't actually do the surgery until he could get a formal okay from the pet owner. And since the pet owner was in the military, he had to go track that person down and it wasted two days. With a pet POA, you take that guesswork out of it. The pet POA is also similar to the financial power of attorney where it allows you to make a decision on time when someone can take control over your pet's decisions and then authority. What kind of um, authority to make healthcare decisions and how much do you want them to spend? So your pet POA would be great. It's very useful. It's an easy document to fill out um, and you get it witnessed. Uh, you follow the laws of your state and you make sure that you are preparing your pet sitter so that if in the eventuality that anything does happen, all that's already set up. Creating your documents is only the first step. And thankfully with Gentrio, we make it pretty easy. So if you're, it could take you mere minutes to actually fill out a complete estate plan. You wanna make sure you get it executed, make it legal. But then the next step is making sure, excuse me, excuse me, that you can share it so that everybody knows where to turn in the event of an emergency. This is extremely important because without, the access to those legal documents, any decisions you make are not able to be upheld unless they have those legal documents. So even if you have your healthcare proxy or your power of attorney or your will, unless you share that with whomever you choose, they can't uphold your decisions for you. So you want to make sure that you can create that one place that everyone can go to so that they know what your decisions are and they have access to those legal documents. Um, John will go through this a little bit in more depth, but for us at Gentrio, we want to make sure that we provide a comprehensive solution for you. So not only are you creating those documents, it gives you the ability to share them with whomever you choose and it gives you the ability to update them. So if your life changes, if you 
have a child, if you get married, if you get divorced, if you have uh, are all of a sudden caring for an elderly parent, you can go in and easily update your documents so they reflect what's happening in your life. And Jake mentioned this before, that estate planning is for everyone. And this is incredibly important so, because whether you have that young adult that just turned 18 is headed off to college or you're caring for your elderly parents throughout all of your life's milestones, you wanna make sure that you can continually and easily update your estate plan so that it reflects what your choices are. With that, I'm gonna turn it over to John so he can talk a little bit more about the Gentrio solution. <clears throat> Thank you, Julie. Uh, my name is John Bolera, and as Jen said earlier, I'm involved with the product. So Gentrio simplifies the process of creating a comprehensive and affordable estate plan. Like TurboTax, it provides education and guidance to easily get you through the process and create your plan. All documents are centralized in one secure location. You can share specific documents with specific people. So we've talked earlier about pet sitters. You can share your pet documents with your pet sitter, but that doesn't mean your pet sitter sees your will. You share your will with the, only the people that you specifically want to see your will. The documents are valid in all 50 states plus the District of Columbia. When a survey is completed, Gentrio generates a PDF with clear instructions to make your plan legally binding in your state. Next slide, Julie. Gentrio gives personalized planning for life's events. Gentrio helps tailor a plan to cover all stages of life and various life's events. Priorities can change getting married, buying a house, etc. As your life evolves, Gentrio will help your estate plan evolve with it. It educates and guides without providing legal advice. This is especially useful for considerations like, as we said before, caring for family members like parents. We offer what we call technical coaching to ensure ease of use. If legal assistance is needed, Gentrio partners with and can connect you with a qualified lawyer at a reasonable rate. And I, I think the rate right now is not to, not to be higher than $250 an hour. Gentrio continuously updates its platforms to reflect changes in laws, ensuring that you can keep your plan relevant. Utilize the Gentrio Digital Vault to securely store all your documents, including wills, powers of attorney, and even the pet documents. You control, as I said earlier, who can access each document. Next slide, please. Gentrio offers an intuitive and straightforward interface. Easily create and update documents personalized to your needs. Gentrio has a seamless process for document creation, customization, and uploading into the digital vault. The Gentrio digital vault helps you to always have the latest version stored securely. These documents are easily available in case of emergency. Gentrio revolutionizes estate planning by offering an accessible, user-friendly platform that guides you through the process with education, prioritization, or excuse me, education, personalization, and security. Next slide, Julie. As a member, you can enjoy a discounted rate. This discount is part of your membership. For more details, please visit our website, the Credit Union website, or contact the Credit Union directly. And to say you can you, you can plan your future confidently with Gentrio. Thank you. So with that, we're going to open this up for any questions. And I know we do have one question about the healthcare proxy. And is the, is that a standard document that people should bring to the hospital to show them that they have authority, and who they should share it with? And one, yes, it is a standard document. Again, sometimes it's called a healthcare proxy, like here in the state of Massachusetts, or other places it's called a power of attorney for healthcare. That power of attorney for healthcare is very important that you bring with you so that you can present it to the hospital administration. And that is, you could do two things. Number one, if it's a planned situation, you can go in ahead of time 
and actually um, provide it to your doctors, to the nursing staff, the check-in people, et cetera. Number two, if you are in the middle of an emergency, if you have already shared that document with them in the digital vault, it's a document that your loved ones or the people that you choose can upload very easily using their cell phone and iPad. They can get access to it so that even if you don't, it's not a prepared situation, they have access to that document. And that's something that you can make sure that you, the person that you select can upload it, share it with your medical team, and they can make those decisions for you. Yeah, Julie, I would also say it's best to check with the hospital, but usually once you've shared it with them, they will keep that on file. And that's also good to know because if you've changed your mind on something, they are going to go with the one that they have on file. So just, it's always good to check with whoever you're dealing with, whatever doctor or hospital that you are dealing with at the time. That's an excellent point, John. You're right. Because again, um, two, two things out of that. Number one, they will, sh they'll, they'll keep that and they'll have it on file, which is important. And then number two, if things do change, if your decisions change, if your healthcare proxy changes, et cetera, you have, it makes, you need to make sure that whoever has access to that latest document can share that on your behalf. So another question came up then said that they've already uh, completed a will and can they upload the document into the digital vault? Absolutely. So the digital vault allows you to not only upload and share the, your documents, whether it be documents that you created through Gentrio or you bring with you, but then also it allows you to store important information, which sometimes can almost be as important as those legal documents so that people can share information like who your contacts are, who's your lawyer, who's your uh, a financial planner, how do they contact the Harvard Federal Credit Union, et cetera, and uh, information about your pet. You can upload into your digital vault external documents, like a will that you've done with someone else, as well as additional information so that in an emergency, everyone knows that information that you've shared with them. And then you control who has access to what information. This is really important because a couple of things. Number one, Gentrio is built on secure servers with security in mind because you own that information. We don't sell that information. We don't share that information. It's securely stored and you decide who has access to what. So if you wanna share everything with your partner or your next door neighbor cares for your dog and you only wanna give them pet information, you decide who has access to what. Um, so in terms of assigning, another question came up. Can, are you able to assign a secondary person in case both you and your partner get into an accident? Absolutely. So throughout all of the different documents that we help you create, like your will, your healthcare proxy, your power of attorney, et cetera, you have the ability to add not only that person that you appoint to make decisions for you or a beneficiary, et cetera, but an alternative. So in the event, like let's say, God forbid you name a person to care for your child, but they pass away before you do. You actually can name a secondary or even a tertiary person to be guardian. Uh, same thing with the power of attorney for finances or healthcare, et cetera. So that in, in the event that they can't reach your healthcare proxy and or your healthcare proxy can't, uh, uh, perform or they can't make decisions for you, you can have that secondary person. So if both of you get in an accident, there's somebody in the um, in the, waiting in the wings who can help you out. Great question. 
Thank you, Julie. Um, I just want to make sure that we had a question that was submitted ahead of time, and you you touched on it, but I'm going to just ask it to make sure that this question got answered. For non-married couples who own a home together, uh, how do you ensure that if one of them passes away, that the other one will be um, will be able to keep the house? Sure. So there's actually a couple different ways that you can do this. So the first way that you can do this is making sure that they have the information on the deed. So if you own the home together, the deed will actually, you can list that person at, in the deed itself. And so when you create that, that is um, when you create the deed, that gives you the ability to actually name in or in the title, who, ha who should be joint tenants with the right of survivorship. And that way the home would pass outside the will. And if it's not titled that way, then whoever your part the partner is needs to make sure that they leave their share of the home to that other partner. So um, you could do it through the deed or you could do it through the will. You could also do it through a trust where you rename the deed of the home, the title of the home in the name of both you and the partner. And you set up who joint tenants are with the right of survivorship. Thank you so much. Um, and then you also did touch on, but I will just ask the final question that was submitted ahead of time is how do non-married couples give each other the right to make medical decisions? Yep. Again, it's that healthcare proxy and the, the healthcare proxy is number one. It's, it's fairly easy to fill out. It takes about 15 minutes to fill out a healthcare proxy. You need to make sure that it's executed. So you can actually go into the Harvard Federal Credit Union and have your documents um, notarized or witnessed. And once you have that legal document, that healthcare proxy allows you to give your partner or whoever you choose the ability to make healthcare decisions on your behalf. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacob, John, and Julie. I think we've answered all the questions. I do want to um, encourage folks to um, go ahead and fill out a survey for us. If you don't mind, we would definitely appreciate your um, feedback. So um, yep. one gonna... last thing before oh, sure. we go, go I, I do wanna make sure to give another shout out to the Harvard Federal Credit Union. They have done a phenomenal job of making sure that you have access to complete estate planning very affordably. So depending on your relationship with the credit union, you can get it for free for $50 or $100. And that's to create any or all of your documents. And the credit union does a phenomenal job of not only providing you that information and things like webinars like we're doing today, but also making sure that if you have questions, they can direct them to a Gen Trio staff person. And again, if you need to get your documents notarized to get executed or made legal, you can go into a branch, call ahead of time, and they'll notarize them for you. So it's a really great benefit that you have as a credit union member. And so I really encourage you to take advantage of it. Thank you so much, Julie. Um, so um, we appreciate you all coming today and um, thank you for your interest. You will get a link to the recording, which will be posted on our YouTube, but you'll get it by email. You'll also get all of the slides sent to you. So um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and everyone stays cool today. And um, thank you again. And um, we'll be talking to you soon, I'm sure. Thanks all. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.